Taurus Rising, welcome here to Soul Passages Astrology. I am your astrologer, Georgia Dempsey, and I'm so glad you stopped by for your April forecast. I get the sense that this month has a lot to do for you regarding the lessons of love in your life. Your ruling sign of Venus will be entering Aries on April 5th. Depending upon your birthday, that means you will either be feeling fired up about a friendship and long-range plans, or you could be feeling a strong desire to reach out and help someone in need. I say that because if this goddess of attraction happens to land into your 12th house, she could be nudging you to start a spiritual practice such as hot yoga or lending a hand to somebody who needs it. Mercury, the planet of communications, will be entering your sign on the 5th as well. Practical matters might be on your mind. What do you need to do to take care of yourself? What steps do you need to take to get your life in order? If you can spare some time to enjoy life's pleasures, and if you're Taurus rising, I bet you can, treat yourself to a wonderful massage or enjoy a great meal with friends. If it's nice out, go run your bare toes through some warm sand or just feel the green grass beneath your feet. You know, getting in touch with the outdoors is really important for you. The new moon in Aries, which is lighting up your 12th house while conjuncting Uranus, has you plotting new ways to rebirth your spirit. You are meant to have spiritual courage right now to find unique ways of expressing who you are on the inside. Sweat your prayers at dance church, learn to read the tarot, or volunteer at a women's shelter. Have faith that you can make a difference in the world through courageous action, however that looks to you. If this action happens to fall into your 11th house instead, some new and exciting friends could show up on your doorstep and revolutionize your dreams and plans. If you find yourself butting heads with organized religion or the legal system on the 7th, don't be too surprised. Pluto will be squaring all of this 12th house action that you've got going on during the new moon. Now this could represent you breaking free from the religious upbringing of your childhood or possibly, and hopefully not, but a confrontation with the law. With Uranus squaring Pluto, you've been feeling more daring lately, causing you to want to reform those ninth house structures that have been binding you too tightly with old-fashioned patriarchal rules. Since your 12th house is involved, I would be remiss if I didn't caution you to be a little careful. Though the 12th house can have a very spiritual feeling to it, it is also known as the house of secrets, sorrows, and self-undoing. And Pluto does love to dig up things that are hidden, and there's usually lots of stuff hidden in that 12th house. Your god of passion, right along with taskmaster Saturn, will be moving retrograde through your 8th house. Mars starts his backwards march on the 17th of April, and that could bring in some frustrated desires in the romance department. Joint financing could also become an issue, and banking loans could be delayed or causing you problems. Lately, you've been learning a lot of lessons regarding being intimate with another person, including shared resources. With both Mars and Saturn, in slow down mode, it might be time to look into your crystal ball so you can take direction from within. You know, that intuitive sense is very important in the eighth house. You are likely making important decisions right now regarding eighth house matters, such as sex, taboos, inheritances, financing, 
all the big things in life. So take your time. Big life issues are at stake, so it's worth the time to gather the information, allowing you to make informed decision when these planets move forward. Pluto, who is lurking in your ninth house at 18 degrees of Capricorn, has been asking you how far you are willing to go to pursue your life path. Lately, this planet of turmoil has probably been forcing you to rely on your inner resources to sort out the challenges of life. In the ninth house, this could represent some legal battles, problems with authority figures at school, organized religion, other cultures, bankruptcy, or even your own life path. By the, and he is moving retrograde um, this month too, just to be aware of that. Now by the 19th, however, you should be feeling energized as the sun leaves that quiet sector of your chart and lights up your first house of self. Use your seventh house mirror if you want to learn more about who you are. And I say that because your house of long-term partnerships will be lit up beneath a full Scorpio moon on the 22nd of the month. Partners will be revealing to you what they think, especially when it comes to matters of love, sex, and binding contracts. The moon is in close vicinity to Juno, and she is a goddess that has much to do with sexuality, marriage, and upholding contracts. At times, Juno can also represent a mistress. The dual message of this goddess is wrapped up in her history. Juno was the wife of Jupiter, who happened to be quite a philanderer, and he had a really hard time keeping his hands off of all the mistresses. Though she was pretty upset with her mate, Juno stood by him, honoring her marriage contract. Her steadfastness probably had a lot to do with the fact that Saturn is her father, and he is the setter of, and enforcer of the rules in our lives. She is, however, currently running retrograde along with everybody else in the sky right now. So steadfast as she may be, there is a feeling of reviewing the contract's terms. So pay attention to see what you learn under the light of the Scorpionic moon. By the 28th, you could be rethinking things yourself. Mercury will be moving retrograde in your first house. So you could be making adjustments based upon what you've recently learned under the light of the silvery moon. You might also be wishing you could take back some words that you've spoken in haste. By the end of the month, you should feel more charming no matter what comes out of the wash, for Venus will be conjuncting your sun. Your charm and ability to draw in that which you desire should be running at an all-time high. You're looking good, Taurus Rising, and others are sure to notice. Also, I do want to just say a huge thank you to the world for your great response for my readings. I really appreciate um, the support. I love my interaction with you guys. I have already seen people go off on really positive life paths um, just for simply, you know, listening to the stars. So I think it's great. So if I can help you with an astrological reading or counseling, give me a call. As part of my good karma and building my business, I'm going to extend my special till June 1. So one hour reading for $50. And that's a pretty rocking deal. I spent about 10 hours uh, putting together a chart. So, and again, it's just me wanting to put out the good message, build things slowly, and um, help to set people on better life paths. So if you are interested, my contact information is at the beginning of the video. Now the only caveat I have for you right now is that I am in the middle of the Sag 2.0 restructuring process. So towards, I'd say the end of March into early April, if I'm a little slow getting back to you, it's because I'm moving across country. I am going to a more spiritual place, a place where I can have my toes in fertile soil, place where I can simplify life, where I can um, start working off the north end of my uh, node of my moon. So I'm so excited, but that might slow things down a little, so just know that. 
If you are waiting for me for a couple of days, you can entertain yourself by going to my YouTube channel. Check out the video I did on Saris recently. She is a powerful female asteroid. She has much to do with our lives, and I kind of outlined that in the video. And then I did a follow-up video, which you may not have had a chance to see, about what happens in your chart if Ceres and Pluto start uh, going at it together. All right, that all being said, I wish you the absolute most wonderful April. Peace, blessings, and namaste.